what's up everybody welcome back to exotic astrology again and today we will discuss on our series of planets with big bala directional strength and today's topic is the directional strength of jupiter and mercury because these two planets get their directional strength in the ascendant in the lagna right there in the first house in the head all right so we will discuss about them why do they get directional strength there and what does this directional strength of jupiter mercury in the first house means and how should we use it in our life okay there you go if you're new to the channel and you have not yet subscribed then please subscribe to it and if you want a consultation from me then please approach me through my website below and if you like this video click the thumbs up and if you want me to make any other video then please let me know in the comments all right and before i begin and because today's video is on jupiter so i must say god is there with you all the time just look to him and he will be there for you all right so jupiter and mercury both are very important planets like every other planet in the chart but why i'm saying is they are very important here is because they get very strong when placed in the lagna what does this mean it means that now lagna is the most important house in the horoscope it is the ascendant the rising sign it decides everything else because as they say fourth house is the home they say seventh house is marriage tenth house is career but whose home whose marriage whose career your yes a particular person's home particular person's marriage particular person's career so that is how you uh, understand the importance of lagna because wherever the lagna is from there all the placements of the planets are seen so whenever we say that venus is in the fifth house it is fifth house from where it means fifth house from the lagna right in general when we say that venus is in the fifth house now it can be in fifth house from jupiter from mars also that's a different thing but in general when we say sun is in the 10th house it means from the lagna so lagna is very important and these two planets gets directional strength in the lagna so it becomes very important to understand them so now basically what mercury represents mercury represents our skills our ability to communicate comprehend things understand the pros and cons and analyze different things it represents our ability to hold assets wealth in this world it represents our ability to get things done <laughs> also yes and uh, it represents our relatives and our uncles especially yes and it can also represent the financial decisions that we take and then what does jupiter represents jupiter represents many things it represents the husband in a woman's chart and it represents children in general and it represents our guru spirituality wisdom guidance divine connection etc god basically because as it is said in the scriptures that by the grace of god you get a guru and by the grace of the guru you get god okay so uh, whenever we are having any spiritual path it uh, we have to make sure that it is authorized and we are doing it under the guidance of a guru and not just whimsically doing anything uh, by <coughs> researching stuff in the internet or by uh concocting ourselves okay maybe this process is like this this process is like that and both jupiter mercury signifies education learning higher learning lower learning <laughs> all kinds of learning come under these two planets yes all kind of discussions talks higher philosophical talks jupiter mercury can also represent talks of this material world uh, who won the cricket match who is and having who is having an affair with whom or who is going to win the next election yes all these stocks can also come under mercury now what is the first house first house represents the head it is where the intelligence is stored right so that is how the person behaves so now when jupiter mercury gets directional strength there what does it mean it means that we should never stop learning in life because jupiter and mercury both signify learning yes that means we should never ever ever stop learning in life and those people who have jupiter or mercury placed in the first house i have noticed personally that these people are always eager to learn uh, new things they are they never say oh i don't want to learn this i i always know this although that can happen if jupiter or mercury is afflicted there or if another malefic like saturn is also sitting there 
then this can give the person some level of stubbornness and uh, some level of uh, what do you say that uh, unwillingness to learn new things yes or they may be too much caught up with the things they already know and they may feel that we don't need to know anything else we know we know everything else already right so unless that is the case uh, but if they are placed alone then i have seen that these people are very much eager and enthusiastic to learn new things and the very fact that it gets direction of strength in the lagna it means that our whole life should be like a learning process if i take the example of mercury here that we should try to learn from everything that happens in our life so they don't get directional strength in the second house or the seventh house or tenth house which means lagna is the sum total of all the houses yes so which means whatever happens in your life in matters of your second house your family or in matters of your third house your younger siblings or fourth house your mother fifth house your children sixth house enemies seventh house marriage and eighth house in laws ninth house father 10th house your work 11th house your elder sibling the 12th house losses so whatever happens in the rest of the 11 houses which is in a way represented by the lagna because the lagna decides so whatever happens in every area of your life which is signified by the 11 houses we should try to learn and gain knowledge yes we should try to understand the lessons that those houses and those planets and those incidences which they are trying to teach us otherwise uh, jupiter and mercury uh, would have not uh, been given directional strength by parashara in the first house yes so we have to understand that life is represented by the lagna yes because that is what is the bodily force ultimately yes that is what sustains you the first house because that represents the body and the self so whatever happens in your entire life we should always try to learn the lessons from that and we should always have a uh, humble attitude when it comes to learning we should never think that we know it all <laughs> we should never think that there's nothing in this world that we need to know more because that can't happen because uh, the world is infinite it's unlimited i am not talking of spirituality here i am talking of materialistic things here mundane things here scientific things or anything material yes so even in this material world if you want to stay happily you always have to have this constant learning attitude which is very good in fact <coughs> and mercury in the lagna when it gets the ball it also signifies that <coughs> we should always try ourselves to understand things first yes we should always use our head instead of going on asking others <laughs> which means that i'll come to jupiter later but let me talk of mercury first it means that whenever we are trying something first we should try our best that we understand yes now the funny thing is jupiter also gets directional strength in the lagna now who is jupiter jupiter represents the guru yes so this also means that if there is any person who we should put on our head <laughs> head means we should always listen to what the person says that is the guru now here guru does not mean one uh, who is having a uh, white cloth around him or her or one who has a saffron cloth no it doesn't mean that guru uh, simply means that one who is in line with the teachings of god and in parampara and in the authorized disciplic successions and he or she has the power to give you guidance related to spiritual matters okay spiritual elevation that person by seeing whom you feel that yes i also have some hope in my spiritual life <laughs> that person is the guru he can he can he or she can be anybody yes that person may be your uh, 10 year old child also if that person knows a lot of a uh, things from the scriptures and is guiding us so age is not a barrier so just because somebody is 50 or 60 years old and he or she has had some experiences in life you can't say that person is guru guru is one who takes you to god that is the definition of a guru and there are many definitions of course the word guru also means one who is very heavy yes that is why sometimes when you go to a uh, satsang and some holy programs uh, then the gurus may speak very heavily this is wrong this is right <laughs> in 
instead of uh, film stars and cricket stars, cinema stars, who may speak things very sweetly to allure your minds and then you get cheated later on. Yes, you expect something and then you don't get something. Yes, so sometimes the guru can be very heavy. So when they get directional strength in the lagna, it means that we should try to follow the orders of our gurus, our preceptors as the life and soul. Which means that whenever our guru gives us any instruction, suppose somebody has opened a YouTube channel, suppose, let me give an example, and suppose the guru has told him that you open this channel, okay, I mean the guru may not say directly, the guru may say that you spread spiritual knowledge, so then suppose you decide, okay, now I'll open this channel, okay, you are teaching Bhagavad Gita or Srimad Bhagavad, whatever you are teaching, that's up to you, or maybe you are teaching about the Puranas, Vedas, or Upanishads, then now the Guru has told you that spread spiritual knowledge. So now you should take that order as your life and soul. This does not mean that you keep making videos 24 hours, but you ensure that you maintain consistency in making the videos. Now that consistency can be anything. You, you may make a video once a day or once in three days or once in a week or once in a month, but whatever is the frequency, keep it constant unless there is some uh, unwarranted disaster in your life. Then that's an exception. But Suppose somebody is making uh, one video every day or one video every week, then that person must maintain consistency because consistency shows that you are attached to the process, right? Otherwise, you are only going after results, yes? So sometimes I get people telling me that, oh, I have this YouTube channel, I am putting videos from last three months, but I am not getting subscribers. So if you had opened a channel to get subscribers, then you're mistaken then even if you get a million billion subscribers you will not be happy because that's how desire is it never gets extinguished so when guru gives us the instruction we must do everything possible in our capacity and in our limited range with the limited resources that we have that we execute his or her instructions as our life and soul yeah. so that is very important because guru is getting direction and strength there so it also means that in our entire life, which is signified by the Lagna, when we follow the word of the scriptures, the gurus, saints, holy people, when we go to satsang, we read the scriptures, we understand what this world is, we understand the verses Lord Krishna is trying to tell us, and then we go and seek enlightenment from the enlightened and divine beings, then our life will be on track, because whenever the Lagna is out of balance, it shows a person whose life is not on track. So sometimes have you seen people who are completely headless? They don't know what's going on in this world. They are just like going to job today. They're coming back. They're sitting with their wife. They're watching TV. They're, they're going to Goa. They're going to France. They're going to London. But they have no idea what's going on in this world. They are just like a remote uh, control. You press it. And they're like. <laughs> so. It is very essential that we remain in contact with our gurus and our guides and our counselors and our preceptors, especially who can give us spiritual wisdom. And by that, we will also keep our life on track because many people tell me that, oh, my life has gone out of control. Everything is just haywire. <laughs> so what to do? The solution is in your lagna, you should have Jupiter, which represents mantra, spiritual practices and doing things and arranging your life in a way that benefits you spiritually which means suppose you are chanting some mantras in the evening i always give this example and then suppose somebody in your friend circle has told you oh today night we are going to the pub we'll enjoy drinking wine and there will be too many girls there let's go have fun if you're a girl then too many boys whatever it is <laughs> Then uh, suppose now you have to chant these mantras for one hour or 45 minutes and you know if I go there, that's it, today my mantras are over. So then you have to make that decision and you have to tell them, no, I'm not going. <laughs> because if you tell them that, oh, okay, you are telling me now I will go, then it's not going to happen. Yes, because then you are not giving priority to Jupiter. Because first house represents the lagna, that which you prioritize at the top. That means Jupiter should be the first priority. Yes. 
which means that whenever you have a chance to do something spiritual you should never lose that opportunity you should always take it in fact what to speak of opportunity coming to you you should go and knock the door of opportunity <laughs> so suppose you uh, hear that oh there's some holy program going on there <coughs> you may be anybody you may be hindu or christian or a muslim it doesn't matter suppose you know that uh, there's some uh, meet going on in the church some great bishop or somebody has come and they are giving a speech on god then we must not uh, lose that opportunity to go and listen from them yes and by that our life will be on track because lagna shows the head the intelligence so if the lagna is good everything else will be good so that's the meaning of jupiter in the lagna that we should try to execute the orders of our guru as the life and soul and we should never miss a chance to do anything spiritual that we can get in our life and we should always prioritize spirituality as the first and whenever we are in difficulty we should always approach the guru so that's the beauty of jupiter and mercury you approach the guru and you try yourself mercury represents your self efforts and jupiter represents the enlightenment which you get yes so the guru so take the example of bhagavad gita that's perfect so lord krishna told arjuna i spoke the gita now you fight <laughs> so <coughs> once you have heard the gita which means once you have heard the instructions of your guru and then you execute it yes then you will encounter challenges and then by that you keep learning which is mercury so both jupiter which represents learning from the higher source and jupiter which uh, and mercury which represents learning yourself both of them gets direction strength in the lagna so if somebody says that oh i will uh, only learn myself now i will not go to a guru i don't need a guru that's sheer nonsense that can't happen because then there are chances that what you learn in 100 years the guru may tell you in one day <laughs> yes so uh, and on the other hand somebody says oh i will only go and listen to the guru i will not do anything myself no that is also not going to happen you have to go to the guru first and then you have to execute whatever the guru says all right so that is what i wanted to say i hope it is understood now why jupiter and mercury gets directional strength in the lagna and that is all i wanted to say therefore if you have any questions queries or comments regarding this video or if you want me to make any other video then please let me know in the comments okay and if you are new to the channel and you have not yet subscribed then please subscribe to it and if you want a consultation then approach me through my website below and see you next time with the dig bala of <laughs> venus and moon yes oh yeah and before i end this video i forgot to say that the planets jupiter and mercury as we rep as we know the tatva yes which tatva they represent jupiter represents ether and mercury represents earth element so whenever we uh, take any decisions related to these planets we should take it very cautiously because they affect the lagna because they get direction strength there okay so always take guidance from your gurus your guides your counselors and then execute them <laughs> okay that is it from my side wish you good luck in taking guidance from your gurus and in executing the instructions all right bye bye see you oh yes and i forgot to say something in this video and i realized that uh, this is very important yeah so the first house the lagna also represents the east from which direction the sun rises yes so as we know that sun rises from the east and sets in the west so what does this mean that whenever we are trying to study something or trying to gain spiritual wisdom or trying to do some spiritual practice most importantly then it is highly 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 recommended that we do it during the time of sunrise especially during the time of brahma muhurat now what is brahma muhurat brahma muhurat is near about there are many definitions but one of them is one and half hours before sunrise so suppose the sun is rising at 6 am exactly in the morning so then 4:30 am to 6 am that is the time of brahma muhurat yes that rough 90 minutes roughly so that time is very 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 powerful very 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 potent very 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 important and very strong uh, for our uh, spiritual uh, practices and 
that is the time when rishis would uh, start their meditation they would get up before the brahma murat so and then as soon as the brahma murat would start they would start their meditation they would start their penance they would start reading the scriptures they would start doing all their spiritual activities yes and all the resolutions that they would take that that also were uh, many of them were taken during brahma murat suppose they start some fire sacrifice or some yagya so that is a very 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 strong time to start things and by that what happens is uh, when the sun is rising yes so then you are totally ready you are totally in a mood to go and fight things in this world because it often happens that when we start doing some spiritual practices then we started initially but then when we go out in this world yes then we lose those powers sometimes so suppose you are chanting some mantra for one hour in the morning then during the time you are chanting you feel very calm very peaceful very mindful you are very happy that you have finished one hour of chanting but then when you go out to the college or you go out to the office or to the company then you may suddenly feel oh all my energy is drained these people are talking things which are not conducive for my spiritual life etc etc which means that the more we uh, the the more we do our spiritual practices in the morning because that's what uh, kicks off the day right so when we do our practices in the morning and even if we are going to study something yes so then uh, we should uh, study in the morning that's the best time now somebody will write in the comments but oh but i can't study in the morning i can't get up in the morning you know that that's a different topic specifics will vary but first house is the east where the sun rises yes so that means it is very important that whatever we do pertaining to learning and especially spirituality we always do it in the morning now this does not mean that if uh there are certain things which you did not do in the morning you cannot do it during the day or after the sun rises or you cannot do it at all it doesn't mean that it simply means that when you are going to do something if possible you do it during that time if you can't do it then you can do it any time of the day now there are some mantras which you should chant only before sunrise and some mantras which you or uh, should chant only after sunset yes so that is a different criteria i am not saying of those specifics here that okay uh, this mantra cannot be chanted before sunrise that's okay i am not saying of that if that is only to be chanted after sunset that's perfectly fine but i am saying in general if there are no specific regulations like that then it is best that we do it in the morning yes and um, instead of doing it in the night because if you do it in the night then uh, what happens you just go and sleep right so if there are some mantras which you need to do in the night that you can do because then that uh, will help you to get a good sleep and then your mind will be fresh and then the next day morning the morning mantras you can chant much better yes so that is how uh, this happens and that is why they also get directional strength there so instead of studying at 2 o'clock in the night <laughs> maybe we can sleep by 9 o'clock or by 10 o'clock even if we have exams uh, late night studies may not be very beneficial sometimes yes even i have seen personally in my experience that whenever i have studied something in the morning the grasping power is very high and the another thing which is important here is whenever we are going to start something yes so suppose what's the time now now the time here in germany is 8 12 am so suppose now i have the luxury and the opportunity to start something at a particular time so when should i do that so now best thing is when the sun is rising but now the sun is already rising <laughs> so that means this is a very good time to make this video but suppose i am in the afternoon yes and i and i'm seeing that the sun rises over 6 hours back so then what should i do i should check the horoscope of that place and i should try to see when is jupiter or mercury coming in the lagna yes so suppose uh jupiter is in a particular sign suppose where is jupiter now now jupiter is in the sign of libra till october i guess so that means whenever the ascendant will go to libra yes and where is mercury now mercury is in capricorn i guess 
or whenever the lagna goes to capricorn then these are the times when i should start reading or start studying if i cannot do it during the sunrise yes because even then in the transit these planets will be in the bala then yes they will be extremely strong so they will also help me and especially if you are starting something pertaining to spirituality is much more important that we try to do it during that time it may not be possible always because jupiter or mercury may come into the lagna at night 10:30 then you can't start a seminar on astrology or spirituality at 10:30 that's not possible or the other thing we could do is we could see when guru is aspecting the lagna yes which means preferably when jupiter is in 159 because seventh house is not a very good placement for jupiter uh, pertaining to spirituality because that is opposite of the position of digbala so uh, better than uh, if if you cannot have jupiter in the first then at least you try that when jupiter is in the fifth or in the ninth these are like options and priorities and how to improve things yes uh, but if you can't do that always remember that any time you start anything spiritual it is always auspicious because in the 6th canto i think of shrimad bhagavatam the past time of bali maharaj comes where lord vamandev takes away everything from bali maharaj and then later gives him sutala the planet yes which is the underwater heavenly planet which is much more opulent than the heavens and then bali maharaj is captivated by this uh, beauty of sutala and then he offers his obeisances to uh, to vamandev and then what happens vamandev asks to shukracharya who is the guru of the demons yes who is actually venus that the guru shukracharya that oh my dear shukracharya what happened to your disciple <laughs> he lost everything Uh, everything was gone everything is finished and then shukracharya said no my dear lord nothing is finished because the moment he chanted your name everything became all auspicious now shukracharya is not brihaspati he is not jupiter yes he is venus he is the guru of the demons now the guru of the demons is telling this that whenever whoever wherever they chant your name everything is all auspicious all right and that is what also lord shiva says to mother parvati when been asked mother parvati asks him oh who are you meditating on the lord shiva says this famous verse shri ram 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 eti ram ram mano ram sahastra nam tatulyam ram nam varanane i am chanting i am meditating and i am absorbed in the name of lord ram shri ram 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 eti ram ram mano ram oh my dear parvati oh mano ram ram devi parvati and he is telling rame rame manorame manorame means my mind is fully uh, totally absorbed in lord ram sahastra nama tatulyam ram nama varanane it means that thousand names of vishnu is equal to one name of lord ram <laughs> so if somebody says we cannot chant the vishnu sahastra nam you just need to chant the name of lord ram once ram you just say that's it vishnu sahastra nam is over <laughs> all right so even if you can't do it in the morning or when jupiter is in the lagna or mercury is there or jupiter is in fifth or ninth no problem just chant the name of ram and start it it is going to be all auspicious okay so that is it i will stop here bye bye i hope i don't have to make another video for this okay see you